Hello, hello. Welcome everybody to this edition of the Cancer Coach Talks. I'm your host, Leslie Nance. Just like it says right there, there's my name. Leslie Nance, Certified Holistic Nutritionist, Certified Holistic Cancer Coach, and here to give you some inspiration for healing and loving your life through this process of cancer. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see, what else do I need to tell you? I am here on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and sometimes during the week as well, uh, just really motivating you and teaching you what I know about healing the body through many modalities, through nutrition, through mindset, through emotional work, all of those things that we think about when we think about total healing and healing our lives, because that's what it's really about. It's really about healing our entire lives, not just that part of us that is sick. So thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Um, the only way that I know that you're here live is to type a comment. If you're watching this in uh, in a replay or you are watching this in uh, on YouTube, please take a moment and leave us a comment there as well. We will definitely see them and we're always happy to see them and to respond. So thank you so much for that. Okay. So we are going to jump into our topic tonight. Um, last week on the Cancer Coach Talks, I had a recorded show and I talked about lack and how um, how scary lack is and operating in lack, L-A-C-K, operating in lack uh, is the opposite of wholeness. You cannot be operating in wholeness and experiencing lack at the same time. And we talked about lack of resources. We talked about lack of health. We talked about lack of time. Uh, we talked about lack of finances, all of those things that we feel like that are holding us back in our journey, but it's indeed because we're allowing that to happen. And so tonight I want to bookend that conversation, if you will, with a conversation about gratitude, because one of the best ways to banish lack out of our lives is to walk in gratitude. And I know that this is a term that is thrown around a lot. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there talking about gratitude and we see all the memes and we see all the happy faces and we see, you know, you gotta, you gotta be grateful. You have to, you know, you have to have gratitude. You need to start a gratitude journal. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to have all this fancy schmancy ideas around gratitude, but really gratitude at its root is something that propels us forward in our healing. And we're going to talk about why that is tonight. So let me say hello to a couple of people. Hello, Amory. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Babette. Thank you guys so much for being here. All of these beautiful women that understand um, the value of, of, of uh, um, uh, making a transformation in their life and healing their lives, not just their cancer, but healing their entire lives so that cancer doesn't have a place to live. So so thank you for being here. And I love each and every one of you so very much. Hi, Rosette. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's Frank. Oh, my gosh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, OK, so let's 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 start off this conversation with let's empty your cup. I want you to forget for a moment everything that you have heard or you have been told about gratitude, not because I'm the end all be all on the subject, but because I don't want you to have any formed discussions in your head about what gratitude is. So all of my my uh, my clients, we talk about emptying our cup and coming with a fresh perspective, because if your cup is so full of all these ideas and all these notions and you know everything and I know, I know, I know, which are two of the most dangerous words on the planet. I know, I know, I know very dangerous words, especially when you're looking for a transformation and a change in your life when you want something different. So, but if you have a cup that's completely full, then nothing else will fit in. And so this type of a talk that I'm going to share with you or forward thinking might fall on deaf ear. So I want you to take a minute. I want you to empty your cup of all the notions that you have about gratitude. Doesn't mean that you can't pick them back up again, but I want you to listen with open, fresh ears to what I'm about to say. So cancer feels very physical, doesn't it? It's happening to our physical body. 
And we think about things like emotions, positive emotions or negative emotions, that they don't affect what is happening in our physical body. But nothing could be further from the truth. If we believe that we are going to heal, and I'm not talking about the kind of belief where you fake it till you make it. I'm talking about the type of belief that is deep seated in you, that you know, that you know, that you know that cancer is not your destiny. You just have to find the path to make that happen. That is an emotion. That is not any physical evidence. There are some of you that are here tonight that are living with active cancer, but you know that you know that you know that it is not your destiny and that one day you are not going to have cancer. And some of you have already lived that, that are here this evening. And so, but cancer feels very physical, you know, like all physical because it's happening to our physical body and we have treatments that affect our trip, our physical body. We enact nutrition to help our physical body. We do surgery to help the problem with our physical body. We do, we do, uh, you know, it's, it's happening within our cellular activity, our matter, the things that we're made of. It's happening internally at a microscopic level. So it feels very physical, but this is also very, very much about your mental state as well. I've talked to several people over the last couple of weeks that are really struggling with the idea that cancer is their destiny and that this is going to kill them and soon for some people. And I've watched them struggle through this and they'll get on the phone with me and they'll say things like, well, I'm staying really positive. You know, I'm being really positive. I have a lot of faith that I can beat this, but all of their actions are contrary to that. Oh, look, you can see my mic tonight. <laughs> Did that just make a really loud noise? I apologize. But all of their actions are contrary to that. They're living contrary to that positive mindset. They aren't doing the work. They're faking it until they make it. And let me tell you right now, you cannot heal by faking it until you make it. You got to do the work. You got to figure out your path to healing. And the other side of that, you got to figure out what is blocking your healing along that path. Whether it's nutrition, whether it's mindset, whether it's treatments, whether you need to fire your doctor whether you need to find a good support system, whether you need to hire a cancer coach, no matter what, you cannot fake it until you make it. Positivity, ting, doesn't always mean that you're not gonna have cancer anymore. The belief system inside of you that tells you that sixth sense, that gut feeling that says, this is not going to kill me. How do I fix this? That's the person you need to be listening to. Not the, I'm happy. Because mm, that, I'm happy. I'm fine. No, really, I'm totally fine. Some of us do that because we don't want puppy dog eyes. Some of us do that because we just have no clue how we're going to fix the problem. Some of us do that because we're afraid if we're negative that we're going to that we're that that we're going to that we're going to spin out of control and certainly die. <laughs> and it's exhausting. That kind of attitude, that kind of fake it till you make it positivity is exhausting. I have a whole lesson that I did about that. Go to my YouTube channel, The Cancer Coach. Go to The Cancer Coach on YouTube. Just search for that. You'll see me I, and look at my channel. I did a whole talk about how exhausting it is to try to stay positive. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be positive. You absolutely should be positive. You should be trying to incorporate positive emotions like gratitude. But I will tell you, the people that are healing themselves are not people that are just remaining positive. I love it, Rosette. Cancer's not my destiny. Because that's how Rosette says it. 
<laughs> she doesn't just say cancer's not my destiny. She says, cancer's not my destiny. <laughs> but the people who heal are not just being positive. They are super clear about what they need to heal, how they're going to heal, how they're going to get there. And ultimately that it is 100% possible for them to heal. <laughs> you know, I'm right. <laughs> Giving thanks for things for things. Boy, that's like total Texas coming out right there. That was, did you hear that? Like, See, you, you just think that I don't sound like I'm from Texas. I've lived here for six months. I've been back home for six months and thang already came out. <laughs> it was actually, I just misspoke, but I'm too, I'm too wound up. <laughs> but giving thanks for things that have already happened and giving thanks for things and having faith that they will happen are very important and the people that are healing their lives know this and gratitude gratitude is a big big part of that the word gratitude means the quality of being thankful readiness to show appreciation if you googled it that's what you're going to see the quality of being thankful and readiness to show appreciation that's an amazing place to be. What a fantastic notion to have that sitting up on your shelf and grab it anytime you want. When you walk in gratitude, it does several things for you. It opens your heart. It allows you to have all the feels. And by the way, you're not meant just to have positive emotions. You're not meant to just feel love and joy and happiness and gratitude and thanksgiving and, you know, all of those positive emotions. You're also, as a human being, meant to feel anger and fear and depression and loneliness and lack. You've heard me say that a million times and I'll say it a million more. You are not made just to feel one set of emotions. You're made to feel the range of emotions. In fact, you can't have one without the other. You cannot have happiness without knowing what sadness is. We must have that polarity in our lives. And so you're made to feel all those emotions. But once you walk in gratitude, you begin to open your heart. You begin to mend things, whether it's relationships, maybe it's a relationship with yourself, maybe it's a relationship with somebody else. Maybe it's a relationship with food. Maybe it's a relationship with your cancer. Maybe it's the relationship with the idea of cancer or life or death. But you can begin to open your heart towards things and understanding that no one else can understand for you. And cancer gives you that opportunity. I know, right? It lifts your energy. And I'm not just talking about your emotional energy. I'm not talking about your chakra, you know, your energy centers. I'm also talking about your physical energy. When you walk in gratitude daily and you are grateful for the things that have already happened, good, bad, and ugly, and you're also grateful for the things that are about to happen, that you're calling into existence with your mind and your mouth, You, you, you begin to lift that energy towards that. And my clients know that you lift that energy towards healing. You're moving towards something, not away from healing, but towards healing. Because we think when we're diagnosed with cancer that we have moved away from health and that we consistently move away from health. But I am here to tell you, nobody moves closer to healing than people that have been diagnosed with cancer. Everything that you have ever thought about it is completely opposite. It gets rearranged in your energy. 
It opens your mind to new possibilities. I work with so many people that are diagnosed with advanced cancer, with advanced diagnoses, and they come to me with the idea that they just want to stop the cancer from growing. They do not come to me with the idea that they're that, that it's possible for them to never have cancer again or to get rid of the cancer that they have. And by the time we're done working together, they're like, forget that, like stopping, you know, so it doesn't grow anymore. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it in my body. And they develop a belief system. They open their minds and their hearts to a possibility. And that runs through the thread of gra gratitude in their lives. Forming a different relationship with what is happening to them. And it's very, very powerful. And it's not fakery and it's not voodoo and it's not some compromise on their religious beliefs or their spiritual beliefs. It is a true way of living that opens a perception, that opens a mind's eye to something different and that something different is possible and achievable. So one of my silent mentors, like he doesn't, he doesn't even know like that I exist on this planet. <laughs> Well, one of my one of my silent mentors is Dr. Joe Dispenza, and if you're not familiar with Dr. Dispenza, I don't recommend him for everyone. I'll be quite honest with you. Unless you have leveled up your mindset game, uh, it can his his work can be overwhelming. But he inspires me. I work with people who have cancer every single day of my life. That's what I do for a living. I'm a cancer coach. This is how I help people. And this is what I do, you know, as a profession is help people through this process. And so Dr. Dispenza, I need people like Dr. Dispenza in my life to inspire me to help other people. And he's written a book called You, uh, no, it's called uh, uh, You Are the Placebo. I had it right in my head. You Are the Placebo. And this book is really heady about how to heal the body with the mindset. And he goes, he talks about the quantum world and he talks about quantum thinking and he really heavy on meditation. Um, and he tells these stories about people have how they have healed their lives. And in this book, he, he points out gratitude as a tool for what he calls suggestibility. And suggestibility means that we, we suggest what we want to happen in our lives. We open our mindset to possibilities that maybe we didn't have open before. And we, we, we make these suggestions and that gratitude is one of these keys that unlocks that. And in his book, I just wanna read you a couple of things that inspired actually this entire talk tonight. Um, but one, a couple of things that he wrote and in the book, uh, you, are, you Are the Placebo by Dr. Dispenza, it says this, um, it teaches gratitude, he's talking about gratitude. It teaches your body emotionally that the event you are grateful for has already happened. If you're one of my clients, you hear me say this all the time. Here's the other thing he says about it. If you bring up the emotion of gratitude before the actual event has happened, your body will begin to believe that the future event has indeed already happening or is happening to you right now. In other words, you are future proofing what you want to happen. So it's important that you're grateful for the things that you already have. And gratitude is not, not the lack or is not the want of something more in your life. It is being grateful for what you already have and building on that emotion for the things that you want most in your life. Now, here's where people get in trouble. They don't know what they want. I have a ton of clients that come to me that clarity is like, bing, bong, bing, 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 bong, bong, bong. I have to send them away to do work before they can even come and work with me because they need to get clear about what they want and need in their life. They have to be open or suggestible to that work. 
And so when we are working in survival mode, like we do when we're diagnosed with cancer, we hear the word cancer and everything goes like instant survival mode, instant fight or flight reaction pops up, right? You're either going to put up your dukes or run like hell. That's fight or flight. And it protects us. And it's a form of fear that we all experience. But it also, in its chronic state, when we're staying in it too long because we've been diagnosed with cancer or we've had a major life event or we've gotten bad news about our cancer even, then it leaves us in that state. And in that state, it is very difficult to see or hear or deal with gratitude because everything feels like it's everything's poopy everything's going wrong could it could things get worse how could this possibly be worse than it is right now for a lot of my clients they're going through they've just been diagnosed they're going through cancer treatments during a pandemic and they think to themselves how could this get worse that's lack and there's no wholeness in lack and there's no gratitude in it either and so we have to reverse that thinking. We have to get clear about what we want in our lives. Then we can focus on having the gratitude and the receivership of that as it comes true. And I'm going to give you one of my favorite examples. When I first started out and I knew that I wanted to help people in their health, my personal journey as a cancer survivor, I'm a seven year cancer survivor, breast cancer. These are my boobs, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> so I to put that out there. Um, but as a breast cancer survivor, um, I, um, I, 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 I really wanted to use the knowledge of healing my body because I had healed my body. I'm healthier now at almost 50 years old than I ever was when I was in my 40s, when I was diagnosed and probably even into my 30s. Um, just incredibly healthy after a cancer diagnosis that was supposed to leave me sick and deformed and um, and and beaten up from this journey. But in fact, I came out of it like a warrior. I came out like a a, a, a princess. I mean, it was just amazing the transformation that my body underwent as I began to heal my life. And listen to me, I'm not saying I heal my cancer. I needed to heal my life so that cancer didn't have a place to be. And once that happened, I wanted to teach people how, how to do this. This was such powerful information. I knew that I could not keep it stuffed inside. I needed to tell as many people as I could. So I started off thinking, I'm going to have a food blog. That's what I'm going to be. That's what I'm going to do. So if any of you have ever been to go to kitchens, um, that's me. I won awards. I was in magazines. I was offered cookbook deals. I had a um, I had an award winning cooking live cooking show. I was being courted by some of the biggest networks uh, for my own personal cooking show. I had really kicked some butt in that, but I was still empty. And it's because, and I was, I was having gratitude for the stuff that was happening to me. I was like, this is amazing. Can you believe this is happening? I can't believe this is happening. But I was still empty. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't understand. And one day it hit me. You want to help people. You don't want to help people on this big giant level and give them a bunch of band-aids to fix their life, which is what my food blog felt like it was doing. You, you want to be in their lives. You want to be sharing with them. You want to be teaching them and coaching them through this process of these transformations. And that's when I started my education to become a cancer coach. And at first, I only wanted to work with people who were doing it naturally. That's not what I wanted to do either. I quickly understood that. And I began to work with people who were going through cancer treatments and bingo, the light turned on. But I had to show gratitude. I had to have clarity for those things that I wanted in my life. If I wanted to manifest them, then I needed them to show up in a way that was crystal clear to me. And that's the big difference. It's hard to show gratitude if you don't know what you want. It's hard to future-proof yourself if you don't know what you want. 
And that doesn't have to be to be a cancer coach or to help a million people, you know, or to be whatever. It could just be being the best version of you. It means something different for everyone. For some of my clients, it's being the best grandma on the planet. For some of my clients, it's traveling the world and seeing extraordinary places and doing extraordinary things. For some of my clients, it's a it's going into the health profession and helping people or becoming a coach like me. I've inspired several of my clients to go on to get an education to help people the way that I help people. But you have to know what you want before you can be grateful for it. And that comes through work. That comes through mindset. That comes from working on what do I truly want in this life? Why do I want to heal from cancer? Why am I working so hard to heal? Why am I doing all this to my body? Because I will tell you, just being alive is not enough. You have to understand why you want to be alive. And gratitude becomes a very powerful ally of getting those things once you understand what they are. So here's a couple of things that will derail you and suck gratitude right out of your life. Dr. Google. Dr. Google will suck the life out of you. Stay off of the internet looking for solutions. Find people that inspire you instead. Because if you are looking to feel bad, if you are looking for the opposite of gratitude, if you want to live in lack, then Dr. Google is a great place to get it. Stay away from self-negative talk. Most of us talk worse to ourselves. We wouldn't even say to our dog what we say to ourselves. Refrain from that. I can, I will. I can, I will. I can, I will. A doctor's appointment can suck it right out of you. You can go to one doctor's appointment. You could be kicking butt and taking names and have one little conversation with your doctor and derail the entire process. You have got to be bigger in your mindset and more confident in your mindset than your doctors are about what they do. They are there for a reason. They are there to solve one problem. They are not there to walk you through this process emotionally. They're not there to hold your hand through this process. Most of us have to go elsewhere for that. But you can really get derailed. One conversation with the doctor. I'm not saying ignore your doctor. I'm just saying be stronger than that conversation. Know what you want more than what your doctor says he can do for you. Self-sabotage. That will really derail gratitude. Giving up or giving in. Man, how many times in my life have I wanted to ditch my healthy mindset and my healthy lifestyle, especially when I was just thinking I was just starting out because I was like, this is tiring. Yeah, I was learning a new skill. I was it was like CrossFit for my mindset. I was building muscles. And anytime you're doing that, it's tiring. But I never gave up and I never gave in. Even on my worst days, I was like, mm, I just want to quit but I can't, can't do it. I got to keep going. I want to, I have, I know why I want to be alive. I know what my purpose is. I know with uncertain clarity or with certain clarity, <laughs> with certain clarity, what I want out of this life. And I'm willing to do the hard work to get it. And I know that I'm worth it. What else? Not being clear. <laughs> Let's have this, in, have this in all caps. Not being clear about how you are healing. <laughs> I wish you could see it. It's like it's just giant letters. That will derail your gratitude journey. 
It's hard to have gratitude if you don't know what you want to be grateful for in detail. You must, if you want to walk in gratitude, which is one of the best healing tools out there, you must, you must, you must do it with intention and with clarity. It's not enough just to say you don't want cancer. It's not enough just to say that you don't want to die. It's not enough to just say that I'm scared of cancer treatments. None of that is enough. You have to know down deep inside of you what the heck you are doing and why you want to heal so badly and why you don't want cancer anymore. Imagine my stage four clients who are battling daily some of them have been on regimens for years trying to heal their bodies and they go to war every single day how is that how do people do that it's because they understand that there's more that they want from this life than the cancer that is more important to them than their journey and they walk in that full gratitude that it's going to be theirs. That is how people heal. That is a big key that unlocks that big giant door that you're trying to walk through.